Okay, I am standing here on the Chambersburg Pike, and in front of us is the Mary Thompson House, also known as General Lee's headquarters here on July 1st of 1863. And today we're going to talk about where is the real site of General Lee's headquarters. Now, it's always often been thought of that General Lee's headquarters was here at the Stone House. This stone house, of course, was the home of Mary Thompson during the Battle of Gettysburg, who was a 70-year-old widow. Now, the house was originally built by a man named Michael Clarkson, who purchased a tract of ground right along the Chambersburg Pike here in 1833 and built this stone house. Um, John and Mary Thompson lived in this house with their eight children. Now, John was a troubled man. He was an alcoholic and a drunk. And he left his wife and their eight children, left her to care for the, for the children here at the house. However, uh, in, in being, trying to be a father, he worked out a deal with Mr. Clarkson uh, in the 1840s where he purchased the house and left it to Mary um, to take care of their eight children. Of course, John would die around 1850. Now... When we go across the street, there is a monument here that says CSA in this field was located the headquarters of the Army, Northern Virginia, July 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 1863. And then there's a quote under it. And the quote says, my headquarters were in tents and an apple orchard back of the seminary along the Chambersburg Pike, Robert E. Lee. So it appears from this monument that the headquarters for General Lee were not in this house here, but rather were in tents, as it says here, were in tents in an apple orchard back of the seminary along the Chambersburg Pike. And this is where the story begins to get a little bit strange, because now it's according to this monument and this quote from General Robert E. Lee. Uh, his headquarters were in tents in this apple orchard here. Now, where did this apple orchard come from? And whom's, whose apple orchard was it? And that's where we're going to take the next part of our video tour as we walk up here. We're going to walk up here to Seminary Ridge Road, here on the corner of Seminary Ridge Road. Um, because of modern development, such as the Appalachian Brewing Company, and the parking lot here for General Lee's museum and gift shop, which is the Mary Thompson House, sometimes things get lost in the shuffle. Also in front of us, the stone wall is also the site of the three Confederate prisoners photograph taken from around this area right here uh, in late July of 1863. But as we stand here on the corner where the stone wall is and turn 180 degrees, you will see the C.H. Dustman House. Now, the C.H. Dustman House um, is actually the owner at the time of the orchard where supposedly General Lee's headquarters was posted here on July 1st, 1863. Um, Dustman owned this home, and behind the home was his apple orchard. Now, from this point, it appears that the headquarters of General Lee were not at the Mary Thompson House, but rather in the orchard of Mr. Dustman behind the house. Okay, now a little bit about this. Um, in 1890, 1873, Mary Thompson died. She lived in this house until 1873 and then she died. In 1896 the house caught on fire and was all but gutted except for the stone foundation when it was rebuilt. Um, then in 1907 a man named Henry S. Moyer began to publish articles stating as a source that he had a good friend who had a quote from General Lee stating that his headquarters was in the apple orchard. And there was no foundation whatsoever for that claim. And for some reason, he was able 
to get the War Department to believe the story that General Lee's headquarters wasn't at the traditional site of the Mary Thompson house, but in the orchard. And without doing any of the uh, research or finding any sources from the quote other than it being a good friend, in 1919, the National Park Service erected this monument here. Um, and they placed it here with that statement of a quote. However, in any war records and any official records, there was never any quote from Robert E. Lee that his headquarters was in the apple orchard behind the, behind the, uh, so most likely the real site for the General Lee's headquarters is the site that we all originally thought in the first place that his headquarters was, which is the Mary Thompson House. Now, however, today the National Park Service still holds the fact that General Lee's headquarters was in tents um, in the apple orchard. And, and of course, the National Park Service has come out in recent years and even replanted the historic apple orchard here along the Chambersburg Pike. But without any documentation, uh, it's, it is most likely believable that General Lee, the general of all the Army of Northern Virginia, would have probably stayed in a field stone house rather than in a tent across the street. So the real site, and the story getting tricky, is the real site of General Lee's headquarters is here at the Mary Thompson house, uh, the house built by Michael Clarkson in 1833, which today and since 1921 has been run as the General Robert E. Lee's headquarters museum and gift shop. This has been the real site of General Lee's headquarters, um, and I want to uh, thank Timothy H. Smith, licensed battlefield guide, for drawing my attention to the uh, sources of where that quote came from on that marker. I had did a video early where uh, I had stated that his headquarters was in the apple orchard, and Tim uh, put me into the right direction on uh, the more truth to the story here. So uh, thanks to Jim and a great job as always on your, your research here. We have done a video today on the site of General Robert E. Lee's headquarters on July 1st, 1863, the Mary Thompson House on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Okay, this is going to be the Casper Henry Dustman Farm here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and also Secrets of the Battlefield. And we're here on Seminary Ridge, and we're looking at the Appalachian Brewing Company. Across the street is the old John Thompson house. To the left would be the Charles Croft house. Uh, and just on the other side of the Appalachian Brewing Company is the Mary Thompson house. Now, the Mary Thompson house was originally owned by Thaddeus Stevens. Uh, the widow Mary Thompson lived there, and it was uh, there that... Uh, General Lee made his headquarters on July 1st, 1863. However, the Casper Henry Dustman farm sat right here where we're at today. Now, Casper Henry uh, Dustman was born in the year 1808, and he died on October the 10th, 1881. There was a house that was built today where the restaurant, the Appalachian Restaurant and Brewery, in fact, the, the restaurant is actually built on the old foundation of the Dustman farm. Now, Dustman purchased the farm in 1850. Now, behind the farm sat a barn. Uh, and this was on July 1st, 1863, as the first corps was routed by Davis's brigade's attack, Confederate brigade under Davis, uh, and it pushed Cutler, who was in this direction, uh, Baxter's, who was in this direction, and then next to him, Paul, back through the Casper Henry Dustman farm. Um, also, members of the Iron Brigade retreated through the railroad cut, which sits just behind on the other side of this hotel here today. Now, one of the secrets about the farmstead is, uh, actually there are two of them. One is that Though you can't see anything anymore, the original foundation uh, still exists that the Appalachian Brewing Company 
uh, is built on. So even though it's been covered over with modern concrete, the brewing company actually marks the spot where the house once stood. However, behind the house is more interesting because as a part of the quality hotel here, uh, there's this suite right here that we're looking at. And this suite is actually um, the old barn foundation of the Casper Henry Dustman barn. Um, the, bar the house and the barn were tore down. The foundation of the barn was left up and today is made into a suite with two floors, an upper floor and actually a, a lower floor. And if you go to the side, you can see where it says the Dustman Barn, 1830, 1840 era, used as a hospital during the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, Charles Henry Dustman's barn was used as a Confederate field hospital. Uh, it was one of the first field hospitals beginning to take in the wounded on July 1st, 1863. As Confederates swept past this farm, um, and move forward and took casualties, they would move them back into ground that was occupied by Confederate troops and the Charles Henry Dustman barn was just that. So this video here uh, is covering the farm of Casper Henry du uh, Dustman. Now, he died again like I said on October the 10th 1881 and at the time his wife Evelyn uh, was given uh, in his will uh, which was made in 1880 uh, the estate however she was not able to own the land probably because she was a female so it was it was actually put in the hands of a trustee and that trustee was Samuel Hartzell now Samuel Hartzell uh, okay I am here at the Lydia Leister house also known as Meade's headquarters and we're going to do a video here on the headquarters of Major General George Gordon Meade uh, and the Lydia Leister house. Now Lydia Leister was born in Maryland. Um, at a, as a very young woman she married a man named James and together her and James had six children. Now just around the time that their youngest child was born, her husband James died, leaving her a widow. In 1861, Lydia Leister left Maryland and came here to Pennsylvania. And she purchased a small nine-acre farm just south of the town of Gettysburg. It was just a two-room wooden house that you're looking at in front of us. Um, and it had one fireplace in the house for heat. And it was here in Gettysburg that Lydia Leister, the widow Lydia Leister, hoped to make a living. Now the farm contained a spring, peach orchard, it had a hay field, and other types of grains. Now on July 1st of 1863, as the battle began in Gettysburg, Lydia Leister left this farm and headed south. But on July 2nd, this, this house actually and farm became the central site for a major council of war. The following generals fit into this small two-room farm. General Meade, General Butterfield, General Newton, General Gibbon, General Burney, General Sykes, Sedgwick, Howard, Williams, Slocum, Hancock, and Warner. They all went inside the small room here and had a meeting. And they were asked three different questions. Should we remain here? in Gettysburg and choose this ground to fight. These men crammed into the small house and at that time after the meeting they decided to make a stand and fight here at Gettysburg. Now on July 3rd 1863 approximately at 1 p.m. Uh, 
General James Longstreet launched his assault, which we know as Pickett's Charge. It commenced, and the house was right here at ground zero during Pickett's Charge. The aftermath, the house was riddled with bullets, the porch was shelled and splintered, the spring was spoiled, the orchards were ruined, the hay was gone, the wheat was trampled, the fences were cut down and used for firewood, and there were 17 dead horses on the farm and the property. General Meade himself had escaped the artillery barrage by moving further southward and making his headquarters on Powers Hill. But this house and farm was left in ruins. The widow Litter Leicester would return uh, to this farm uh, and live here again. But this small two room farmhouse here had more Union generals and the biggest council of war of the entire Civil War. Uh, in its very small state, it had, has a lot of history behind it as far as the men that crammed into this small house on July 2nd, 1863 and decided to make a stand here at Gettysburg and fight Major General Robert Edward Lee of the Army of Northern Virginia. This has been the Lydia Leister Farm, also known as Meade's Headquarters on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Okay, this is going to be the Mary Virginia Wade Residence House here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Uh, and in a previous video, we looked at the house where Mary Virginia Wade was born on May the 21st, 1843. And we did mention that she only lived there a short time before moving to Breckenridge Street. And this is Breckenridge Street here. Um, the house that she lived in was just right around the corner up here. Now... <clears throat> Jenny's father, James Wade, uh, was an embezzler. He wasn't very financially uh, responsible. He, he wasn't a good parent. And Mrs. Wade and Mary Virginia Wade, that we know as Jenny, moved to this house. Um, and this is the house that they were living in, their residence, during the Battle of Gettysburg on July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of 1863. And it was from this house here that Mary Virginia Wade left, uh, most likely walked down Breckenridge Street, making a right onto Baltimore Street, and then heading south to her sister, Georgia McClellan. And Georgia McClellan had just had an infant baby. And Jenny was on her way um, to help her sister out with the care of her baby. Uh, and it was at that house on July 3rd, 1863, that Mary Virginia Wade was uh, shot and killed, being the only civilian casualty during the Battle of Gettysburg. This is the second house of Mary Virginia Wade in Gettysburg. The first one is her birth house. This is her residence house that she lived in during the battle. And today it is located at 49 and 51 Breckenridge Street. Um, the third house will be a house that we look at later that we know as the Jenny Wade house that has the statue of her out front, but it's actually the Georgia McClellan house. This has been the Mary Virginia Wade residence house on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.